Here is another quick English video. This guy requested a video about how to get a login code from a used cluster. The login code is also called SKC, which stands for security key code. Or was it SCK, security code key? Well, that doesn't matter, I guess. The stuff you need. At first, you need a cluster, a cheap, mostly blue OBD cable. Mine was around five US dollars. Sometimes they are around ten dollars or now up to 15. Sadly, not all of those cables work to read the login code, but you will only see this after you bought it and you tested it. Then you need a tool called VEC EEPROM Programmer or K plus CAN Commander. I recommend to use the EEPROM Programmer because VEC CAN Commander is not very convenient. I won't give a link to this software because I don't know if it's freeware or if it's not, but in the video you see it's not that hard to find. Of course, there are some scam websites you should be aware of. After downloading the tool, plug in your cable and install your drivers. There are different drivers for different cables, and most of the cable comes with a driver CD. Sometimes there's also cracked software on those CDs, and I also found viruses and porn on them. That's no joke. After you install the driver correctly, make sure the cable is connected to COM1 or COM2. If not, adjust the setting in the device manager. I will show you that on a German Windows 7 machine, but the steps are the same on an English one or a Windows 10 machine. When your laptop is ready, go to your car, install the new cluster and connect the OBD cable and turn on the ignition. You will get an error of the immobilizer and the car wouldn't start if you try to. Another way is to get the pin out of your cluster, connect all 12 volt supply lines to the 12 volts and the ignition pin and to the OBD adapter. Connect all ground wires to the ground pins and again to the OBD adapter. Then connect your K-line pin to the K-line of the OBD adapter. There are different pinouts for different clusters. For example, you can Google Golf 4 Tacho Pinbelegung. I will show it here. But there are also English sites. After connecting and turning the ignition on, start your 4G EEPROM programmer. Make sure you run it as administrator, otherwise it wouldn't work. Go to Options and select your COM port. Then click on Dash and click Read EEPROM. This could take around one minute depending on the cluster you have. VDO takes longer because the EEPROM size and so the file is bigger. If you got your reading correctly, there should be a model, VAG and EEPROM number, as well as the ID, the login and the mileage. Click on File and Save As. I recommend to not rename the file so everybody knows the part number and the version number of your cluster. If you change your file later, make sure to keep the original file as a backup. Please do that. Well, now you are done. But wait, what if you got a Motometer cluster? Then throw it away and get a video one. Or you click dash again, Bosch and get access code. If you can't read the cluster with dash and read EEPROM because you got a Motometer, the tool will tell you to do that. Now the program will try to brute force the access code to gain access to the EEPROM. This should take two seconds or up to three hours. No joke again. The ignition has to stay on all the time. After finding the right access code, do cluster and re-EEPROM again. If some error occurs and this is not possible or sometimes you see a message like wrong access code, go to your C drive in your file explorer and delete the file called video Point dot. Then try again to get the access code. Another way to get the EEPROM file is to unsolder the EEPROM chip or to use a SOIC clip. But that's not the easy way and I think you don't have such a clip. If you do, you should probably know how to use it. If you modified your file and want to write it to your cluster, go to dash and write EEPROM. Sometimes you have to remove both cluster fuses for a few seconds to get it done after writing. Please do not turn the ignition off or pull any fuses while reading or while writing. If you get errors like not supported or no equal found, turn off the ignition and turn it on again and check your wiring and of course your COM port settings. If this still doesn't help you, then your VRG EEPROM programmer file could be corrupted. Try getting another copy of another source. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.